Hey guys, welcome to another ride in the struggle bus where every wheel is an empty triangle. Today I am here to tell you that you are putting too much effort into saving all your stones. Don't worry, uh, I am too. So there's a, there's a saying that goes like this. Double digit cube players think that all of their stones are important. Single digit cube players know that not every stone is important. Don level players know which stones are important and pros know that no stones are important. So let's get you to start caring less about your stones. Uh, so today's standalone struggle bus basics topic is when to save stones. Really it's when to save stones or when to sacrifice stones or when to capture stones, but that's a really long title. Uh, so we're just going to go with, with when to save stones. Um, so this is one of my favorite things to, to go over, uh, because it's a really simple and really important concept. Um, and it's actually quite easily to implement compared to some of the other topics where we go over, where I always mention that this is really important, but you know, it can be tricky. This, this really isn't that, uh, it's actually a fairly easy one to develop. You know, obviously they're going to be, you know, trickier examples. Um, but this one as a whole, not too tricky, but it's still really important and it'll get you a lot stronger, a lot faster than the other ones. will. so let's get into why it's okay to purposely let some of our stones die. Uh, cause we, when we first learn, we generally were really focused on saving all of our stones. Um, but especially as our opponents get stronger, often when we try to save all of our stones, we end up losing a lot more than that. So if we can identify the stones that are no longer important or, or never were important, uh, it'll help us out a lot. Um, so there are kind of two categories uh, that sacrificing fall stones falls into. Uh, the simpler of the two is the one that we're going to go over today, and that's just the plain old, how do we decide if there are stones that are worth saving? The tougher of the two is when we're in the middle of the fight and we need to figure out how can we strategically sacrifice some stones so that we can get forcing moves to help us with the fight. But that's that's trickier and that's that's not what we're going to do today. For now, I just want to focus on the scenario where you have a group of stones that you can save uh, if you play a move and you need to figure out if they're they're worth saving. So to do that, when I consider if I'm going to save a group of stones, I ask myself three questions. And those questions are in order of their importance. One. Do these stones affect the life and death status of any other groups on the board? Two, do these stones have a meaningful follow-up? And three, are the stones simply worth enough points to save? And so before we get into what I mean with those questions, let's go over what they're trying to get at. Um, in the previous video of the Struggle Bus Basics, we discussed the importance of Sente versus Gote. And while this video and that one are both stand standalone videos, you're going to want to have a good understanding of Sente versus Gote before watching this video. So go watch them if you haven't. I suggest watching it with a loved one, perhaps as a struggle bus and chill date night. Anyway, uh, what these questions are basically boiling down to is, is saving these stones sente. And if saving them is gote, is it big enough of a gote move to, to consider saving them? That's really it. Is it sente? If not, is it the biggest move on the board? And just like every other topic I've gone to and continue to go over, uh, there are situations where the answer is pretty tricky to figure out, uh, but there are others where it's pretty easy to figure out. And luckily for you guys, I'll, I'll have examples for both. Uh, so let's get into figuring things out though. Let's go over these three questions in more detail so you understand what they mean and, and what their intent is. So on to the questions. Question number one. Do these stones affect the life and death status of any other groups? What this one's getting at is this. If these stones die, does that mean that one of your groups is no longer alive? Or does it mean that one of your opponent's previously unsettled groups is now alive? Uh, this is the first question because if the answer to this one is yes, you can, you can pretty much just stop right there. These stones are likely important to the global position of the board and you should probably save them. If the answer is no though, then it's on to question number two. Let's look at an example of question number one uh, in a game though. So here we have a game uh, that's in the in the mid game, and Black has just played M13, which threatens to to kill White's three mark stones. So the question is, should we save these stones? So we'll apply the first question: Do these group, do these three stones affect the life and death status of any other groups on the board? And the answer to that one is yes. If those three stones die, then Black's two groups that are marking now are now alive, and that has a pretty big impact on the global position of this board. So in this case, you can stop right there. This affects the life and death of, of other groups. We should save this stone. And White in the game did save the stone by playing M11. So pretty, pretty straightforward example of how question number one works. But let's say the answer to question number one was no. Uh, in that case, we would move on to 
Question number two. So question number two is, do these stones have a meaningful follow-up? Uh, this one will make more sense when you see the example for it. Um, but this one is getting at if the stones you're considering saving have a purpose beyond existing. If you've made it to question two, then you know that the stones don't really affect the global position of the board too much. So do they have a follow-up, like a monkey jump, or another big endgame move, or even a small endgame move, something, anything? Or are they just stones that have no purpose at this point in time? So let's look at an example for question number two. Okay, so here we have Black threatening to capture White's four stones while also attarrying another stone. It's a nice move, Black. And while this is example for the second question, we really should start with the first question. So do these stones, the four stones, affect the life and death status of any nearby groups? No. Both of Black's groups are alive here. So on to question two. Do these stones have a meaningful follow-up? They sure do. If, if White saves these stones, uh, then later in the game, he can, he can jump off those stones into that, that lower area that Black is trying to build up. So White should save these stones, uh, which in-game he did. So good job, White, answering this one correctly. But let's say the answer to this question was also no. What would we do then? Well, then we'd go on to question number three. So question three, are these stones simply worth enough points to save? Eventually every stone is worth saving. It's just a matter of when. Are we going to save one otherwise meaningless stone on move 15? No. Well, after this video, hopefully the answer is no. I won't judge you if you saved one stone on move 15 yesterday. But if you do it tomorrow, I'm going to judge you. I'll drive this bus down to your house, I'll drive by slowly, and I will shake my head in disappointment. You'll be so sad. But are we going to save one otherwise meaningless stone on move 215? Maybe, yeah. The number of meaningless stones worth saving will adjust, you know, over, over the course of the game. Early in the game, capturing six stones just isn't enough. But at move 150? Sure, go grab those 12 points and go tay. There's no hard, fast rule or equation or anything like that that tells you how many stones it's worth saving depending on how far into the game you are. Often it just comes down to if there are bigger moves on the board. And, and how can you tell if there are bigger moves? Well, that kind of comes down to counting. And how do you count? Well, that comes down to waiting until that video comes out. And depending on when you found this channel, that time might be now. What a time to be alive. Anyway, let's go look at another example for this one. So, have we seen this one before? I feel like we've seen this one before. Regardless, White just played B4, which threatens to kill Black's group. So should Black save these stones? You guys probably didn't need this video to tell you to save this group, but let's at least apply the questions. So, uh, do these stones affect the life and death status of any, of any other groups on the board? No. Does this group have any meaningful follow-ups? Also, no. It's completely surrounded. It's just local life. So is it simply worth enough points at this stage in the game? Well, it sure is, right? I mean, it's about a 30-point difference uh, between if it lives or dies. So, so Black is going to save this group. And so these were fairly easy examples. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody probably would have saved all three of these groups, even without this video, without putting too much thought into it. So let's look at examples of groups that should be sacrificed because there's an important aspect to sacrificing stones that I, I really need to explain. This is the same example I used in the Struggle Bus Basics Basic Rules series to go over rule number five, which talked about not saving every stone. I fixed it this time though. And I already told you guys that this was an example of when to sacrifice stones, but let's go over why that is, you and I, together. The questions, do these stones affect the life and death status of any nearby groups? No. Do these stones have any meaningful follow-ups? Also, no. And then, last but not least, are these stones simply worth enough points uh, to save? Also, also, no. And the big thing to consider with that last question is if we decide to sacrifice those stones and play away, and then Black decides to capture the stones, we end up getting two free moves on the board. And so why that's important is so we've decided that we're going to sacrifice these stones and we play this larger move instead. And then Black decides to capture, and then we get to play this move. So the, the question really comes down to, did we get more points out of playing A and B than Black did by capturing? And Black only gets six points here. So are A and B worth more than six points? And even if, even if you're not terribly great at counting, um, it's pretty clear to see that that the answer to this is yes. And this is really important, so it's worth repeating. 
If you decide to sacrifice a group of stones and your opponent immediately takes, you get two free moves in a row. Uh, and often that is bigger than the group that you sacrificed. So it's something that's really, really important to consider when you're answering question number three. And so we have one more example before we get into a really interesting game that has a lot of uh, instances of should I save or capture these stones. Um, I'm going to warn you, this, this example is tougher. Uh, this one's tough enough that I got it wrong in my game. So let's take a look at why. So this is from one of my recent games. It's early in the game, um, and black has just played R2, which threatens to kill white's four stones, um, which also in the process would save black's uh, P2 and P3 stones. So should white save these stones? You guys know what to do at this point in time. Let's, let's apply the questions. Uh, do these stones affect the life and death uh, status of any other groups? Uh, kind of, right? White's outside stones uh, are no longer alive if, if black makes that capture. But if white does decide to sacrifice the stones and plays a move like this, then white's really not in, in trouble. So the answer to the question number one is kind of. So question two, uh, do the stones have any reasonable follow-ups? Um, also kind of. Um, which makes things tricky because if black captures here and then you know white plays away later, later on in the game, black is gonna have this end game follow up. And so in this situation, there is a kind of a follow up. It's not big. And so the answer number two is kinda. And so on to the final question. Are these stones simply worth enough points to save? Well, are they? What? You don't know the answer to this one? Don't worry, I didn't either. I mean, I do now, because I know where AI is telling me to play. So knowing what you now know about the factors that go into saving stones, do you save these stones? Let me know in the comments if you'd save this group or not, and why. I'm curious what you guys think about this one, because uh, again, I got this wrong endgame. Um, so what are your thoughts on this one? Okay, so, so this has been a lot. There are three really important questions to consider. Sometimes they're easy to apply, sometimes they're tricky. So let's hammer this in with some repetition and some more examples. Uh, I've got one more game uh, where there are a lot of stones and groups that can be captured and saved. Um, and so there were interesting decisions to be made. So let's go take a look at that game now. So I'm not gonna go over every decision about saving or capturing stones in this game because there's just, there's a lot of them. Um, but there are a few in particular that, that jump out as interesting. And so this is, this is the first one to consider. Um, and this is an exchange that we see in a lot of our games. Um, but what should black do here? Um, if you answered that black should sacrifice that stone in Tanuki, good job. If you answered L2 or K1, um, then I'd suggest finishing this video, then giving it you know, some thought, and then maybe coming back in a day or two and, and watching the video again and understanding why we, why we should sacrifice this stone. Anyway, so the, the answers to the questions for this stone, you know, does it affect the life and death status? No. Does it have meaningful follow-ups? No. Is it enough for points worth saving? No. And let's see what happens if black tanukis and then white captures. So if black takes his tanuki and then white captures, black gets to Atari the stone and then connect up. So in this case, black traded his K2 stone and these small exchanges for getting B15, which is just a bigger move. So we traded K2 for just a much larger move, and that's profit. Our next move comes about 15 moves later. So I'm gonna play this out and then we're going to get to this one here. So in this situation, white has these two stones that are that are threatened to be captured. So should we sacrifice these stones? What are, you, what are your thoughts on them? Um, you guys are going, ah, yeah, absolutely sacrifice those. That's what you do. Um, and in this case, I, I think we should save them. And the reason here is the, uh, not the easiest to see, um, but question number one, do these stones affect the life and death status of any other stones on the board? Well, yeah, black's two stones on the outside uh, become alive if, if these stones die. And question number two, are there good follow-ups? And that's also yes, because if this group lives, then not right now, but later in the game, this push is gonna be something really difficult to deal with for black. So in this case, as white, I would save these stones. And don't worry, if you got this one wrong, you'll get the next one right, which happens in just a few moves. So here is our next situation. Um, and I was just kidding, this one's actually really hard to figure out. So uh, is it worth sacrificing these stones as black? Uh, let's go through the questions. Uh, 
do these stones affect the life and death status of any nearby groups? So this is the tricky part. You want to say yes. You want to say that, yeah, these stones affect the life and death of White's four stones. The issue here is if Black tries to save these stones, White's going to have a lot of forcing moves on the, on the outside that's going to make his four stones alive. So if Black decides to, to come out and then White extends and then Black extends and then you know, white does something like this, black still probably has to respond to this. And now all of a sudden, white's just kind of looking alive. So if we back it up, really the, the answer to question number one is no, it doesn't affect the life and death status of, of any nearby groups. And as black, I would probably sacrifice these two stones, perhaps to fix this push uh, that is going to be annoying later. And as I'm clicking through the rest of the game, you're, you're going to notice that there are a lot of situations Hey guys, it's me again. So I just want to point out that it looks like at this point in time, Black has decided to sacrifice that group. Unfortunately, he already played the extra stone into it, so it's worth that many point, more points now, and White got an extra turn out of it. So it's good that Black decided to eventually sacrifice this, but it would have been better if he did it a, a few turns ago. Um, anyway, uh, I'll see you guys later. Where there are stones that are being attacked and, and could be saved and sacrificed, uh, but I don't want to get into all of them. Uh, but this is the next this is the next one I want to go over. So white has just played L16, which threatens to kill the marked stone. Uh, should black save this stone? Well, let's go through some questions. Does it affect the life and death of any nearby groups? No. Does it have any meaningful follow-ups? It does. J18 is a pretty big move. So if black does choose to save this and then white plays some random move, J18 is a is a fairly large move. It's still end game. But it's large. So we would consider this a, a meaningful follow-up. So in this case, I would save, I would save the stone. Black decided not to, um, which at least says that he's willing to think about this. Even if it isn't the decision that I necessarily would have made, it shows that Black is putting thought into should should all my stones be saved. Our second to last example comes just a short four moves later, where Black plays Q12 and threatens to to kill the three marked stones. So in this situation, should white save these stones? So if we go through the questions, does it affect the life and death status of any nearby groups? No. Does it have any meaningful follow-ups? Not really. Is it simply worth enough points to save? And that's the tricky one here. Is it? Is it worth enough to save? Um, in this situation, there's, there's something a little more sinister going on in the background though. If you guys remember back at the beginning of this video, I said this thing where, but especially as our opponents get stronger, often when we try to save all of our stones, we end up losing a lot more than that. In this case, if white tries to save these stones, a pretty nasty thing can happen. And yeah, what I'm going to show you is way above most of our pay grades. Um, and no, I do not expect you or your opponents to see this. Um, but just be aware that, that things like this can happen. So if white decides to try to save and black just keeps on, keeps on pushing along, threatening to kill it all the way, and white wants to go again, uh, black has this pretty tricky exchange that, again, I would not expect you to see. I would not expect your opponents to see. Uh, but I just want you to know that things like this exist, and now all of a sudden white is dead locally. And this has turned into a very bad situation for white. Anyway, going back to what the board was, White decided to give those stones up uh, with a very slick response. This is um, a very impressive move for our 12k friend here, um, so I'm, I'm happy to see him do this. So he decided to sacrifice the stones, and it's interesting, it's worth pointing out, Black did not choose to capture the stones. So I don't know what, you know, what went through the minds of both players, but it looks like White was saying, no, these stones are not worth saving. And Black also said, these stones aren't worth capturing. So pretty impressive play for these guys. So finally, we have our ultimate example, um, which really shows how crazy we can get with this. So let's just move along to it so you guys can see what I am talking about. And let's ignore the failed life and death that happens here, okay? And we're just gonna look at the board position here. And before I get into this example, I, I, I wanna point out again, this is, this is a really extreme example. Um, and I wouldn't expect any of you guys to do this. Honestly, it, if this was my own game and I'm black, there's, there's no way I'm giving up this entire corner. Um, but it's interesting to, to see what actually happens if, if we do allow that to happen. Uh, so I just wanted to, 
to point that out, that this is meant to be an extreme example, just to kind of show how crazy this can get, not what I would expect you guys to actually apply in your own games. So what we have in front of us here right now is should Black save his two left stones that I've marked? Uh, if he does save them, every single white stone in the quarter is, is dead. If he sacrifices them, all of the, the white marked stones are still dead. Does any of this really matter, though? Do any, does any of this affect life and death status of any nearby groups? No. Are there any meaningful follow-ups here? Also no. Is it simply worth enough points to save? Because this is pretty damn big. Well, let's see what, hap what Black gets for ignoring all of these stones. So Black decides to sacrifice the stones and plays away. And White goes and captures them. And then Black takes another big move, because remember, he gets two free moves in a row. And then White captures, and this threatens to save his inside stones. Black doesn't care. He follows up his move. White continues to push. Black follows up his move. White again threatens to, to kill the inside stones. Black still ignores, continues to push. White now fully captures the corner, and Black follows up. So this was a huge exchange. How do, how do we figure out uh, if this was worth enough points? So let's go to counting and, and do the maths. So it's really easy. So all you need to do is mark off all this and count this whole area and mark off this and this whole area. And then you need to compare that Oh, he's getting a little off the deep end here. I'm nerding out about math, but look at how happy he is. I just, I, I, I didn't have it in me to, to stop him. So we're, we're just going to let him go um, and do his crazy counting math because uh, we haven't gone over counting yet. And honestly, this is a, a pretty tricky example. So all we're going to do here is I'm going to show you score estimator between if Black decided to save his stones and if Black instead took all of these bigger moves. And you can see here, it's about a 20 point gain for Black, which is pretty sizable and is probably something you never even considered before because you would look at that corner and go, of course I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill all those stones and get all those points. But, you know, sometimes there are just bigger moves out there. Um, man, he's still going, huh? Those numbers together man, and you, you carry wild. The two and you divide he's so by happy three. though. And then, so anyway, you we'll, thing, we'll, we'll send it back to him So if I did all that math right, it looks like Black gains around 19 or 20 points from this. And look at how easy it was to figure that out. So that's it, guys. Now hopefully you have an understanding of the basics of when to sacrifice stones versus when to save them versus when to capture them. And you can look at a board state like this from the beginning of this video and understand why now that these three stones just aren't worth being saved. Um, and I've got some good news for you. This is actually a game of mine against another 1K player. And when I played away, he actually went and captured these stones, which is a big mistake on this board. So even strong single-digit Q players are, are making this mistake. Um, so it really is something that's just important and can, can help quite a bit. And just like a lot of the other stuff we're going on this channel, are you going to get this right every time now? No. You're going to make a lot of mistakes with it, and that's okay. That's how we learn. But now it's something that you are at least aware exists, right? Before, this might not even been something that you considered. You were just going to save all your stones. You're going to capture all the stones you can. Um, but now, hopefully, you have a better understanding and appreciation of when is the proper time to actually save your stones or capture stones. So just like everything else, you know, this will be a new tool for you to, to practice. And if you do it right, you're going to get a lot of free moves. You're going to get big tanukis, and you're going to win more games because of it. For those of you who enjoy this style of how I present information for the game and are looking for reviews and or lessons, uh, I am available. Uh, my information uh, is listed below. Or if you just want to get back to the channel, it's a great way to, to do that as well. Otherwise, uh, thank you for coming out for another ride in the struggle bus where every wheel is an empty triangle. I'll see you guys next time.